Wall Street drops and silver responds. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my stein of coffee and I thought before I get into work for the day we would have a look at what happened last night. Now as I was uh, drifting off to sleep, I had uh, you know, viewers sending me messages that appeared on my phone. Everyone's talking about gold, everyone's talking about gold, but look at silver. And so I had a look and you know, I had lots of pleasant dreams about silver spiking. And uh, I thought we'd read this article that appeared this morning about just the ASX and Wall Street dropping down as the US-China tariffs impact manufacturers. We've seen that here. Yesterday we looked at the Commonwealth Bank PMI for Australian manufacturers, how they're slowing down. And just look at how, or you know, point out, that precious metals are going up. And what does that say to just confidence of people in the market? I mean, we've got people putting money into precious metals, traditional stores of wealth. You've got people putting money into bonds that are even giving you negative returns. So <laughs> let me know in the comments, guys, what, what you think is happening. I mean, there's this real estate boom going on in Australia, that 1% increase, it's all over, guys. You know, it's all over. And remember, this is just all my opinion, not financial advice. The only advice I'm gonna give anyone is don't start an architectural practice. Because if you, if, you, <laughs> if you wanna look at that, look at the only listed architectural practice in Australia and what happened to it. Okay, that's all. So I might do a video on it actually because it's quite depressing when you look at how much revenue they were making. So let's have a look at this article from the uh, ABC by business reporter David Chow. This is just updated this morning. So Australian shares are headed for a moderate drop ahead of today's GDP figures, which may reveal that Australia's economic growth has virtually ground to a halt. Yes, I I would agree with that, <laughs> to be honest. I have another video that I've, I've already got in the can about um, economic growth, and I may release that after this one. I may shift things around a bit. So the Australian dollar has rebounded to 67.6 US cents after falling as low as 66.89 on the back of Tuesday's disappointing retail sales data. The latest figures from the ABS out at 11.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time are expected to show the domestic economic economy grew by 0.5% in the June quarter, according to predictions from Reuters polled economists. This would take annual GDP growth to 1.4%, the lowest level in a decade. Okay. However, NAB's forecasted even more bleak, 0.2% quarterly growth this would suggest Australia's economy grew just by 1.2%, the weakest reading in almost two decades. Well, delayed reaction to US-China tariffs. The local share market will follow a downbeat lead from Wall Street as investors react negatively to last weekend's escalation in the US-China trade wars. It was the first US trading season since Sunday when China and the US followed through with their threats and imposed new taxes on each other's imports. The Dow Jones lost 285 points or 1.1% to 26,181. So I thought what we'd do is we'll jump, we'll jump over here and we will look at, I mean, this is the Dow Jones now and I will do a refresh. Dow Jones is down 285 points. Again, just like the article, down 1% give or take. But what is the Dow Jones index? Because you know, we hear about this and read in, in the news, people mention it. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. And I'll go to my favorite website, Investopia, and I will just zoom in again so you can see it. So I'm looking over here, or I see it looks like I'm looking on the screens. It's all planned, guys. It's all planned. I'm not a budget operator at all. Oh, boy. So Dow Jones Industrial Average, the DJIA. What is the Dow Jones Industrial Average? The Dow Jones Industrial Average is an index that tracks 30 large publicly owned companies trading on the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ. The DJIA is named after Charles Dow, who created it in 1896, and his business partner, Edward Jones. Often referred to as the Dow, the DJIA is one of the oldest, single most watched indices in the world and includes companies such as Walt Disney, ExxonMobil and Microsoft. When the TV networks say the market is up, they are generally referring to the Dow. So it's, yeah. So I mean, 
just that pool of companies to own one stock in those 30 largest companies would be the value of the Dow. <laughs> wow. Understanding the Dow Jones Industrial Average. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was designed to serve as a proxy for the broader US economy. When the index launched, it included just 12 companies that were almost purely industrial in nature. The first company's components operated in railroads, cotton, gas, sugar, tobacco, and oil. It is the second oldest US market index after the Dow Jones Transportation Average. As the economy changes over time, so does the composition of the index. The Dow, the Dow typically makes changes when a company becomes less representative of the economy, e.g. a company loses market capitalization due to financial distress, or when a broader economic shift occurs and changes need to be made to reflect it. How is the Dow calculated, or how is the index calculated? Stocks with high share prices are given greater weight to the index. Okay, okay, no, I got that wrong. I thought I did when I said it. It's not, yeah. So a higher percentage movement in a higher price component will have more impact on the final calculated value. At the Dow's inception, Charles Dow calculated the average by adding the prices of the 12 Dow component stocks and dividing by 12, with the end result being a simple average. Okay. Over time, there's been additions and subtractions to the index, such as mergers and stock splits that have had to be accounted for in the index, where just calculating the arithmetic mean would not suffice. This led to the advent of the Dow divisor, a predetermined constant, though it can be changed if the need arises, that is used to determine the effect of a one-point move in any of the 30 stocks that comprise the Dow. There's been instances, components added or removed, stock splits, etc., where the divisor needed to be changed so that the value of the DJIA stayed consistent. The current divisor can be found on the Wall Street Journal and is 0.14748 or so. Okay. The key point about the DJIA is not uh, is that it is not a weighted arithmetic average, nor does it represent its component companies' market capitalizations, as does the S&P 500. Rather, it reflects the sum of the price of one share of stock for all the components divided by a divisor. Thus, a one-point move in any of the component stocks will move the index by an identical number of points. Okay. Hmm. So, key takeaways. The DJIA tracks 30 large publicly owned companies trading on the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ, created by Charles Dow to serve as a proxy for the broader US economy. One point move in a lower price component will have the identical effect on the DJIA as does a one point move in a higher priced component. Well, there you go. Changes to the index over time. The index grew to 30 components in 1928 and has changed components a total of 51 times. The first change came just three months after the index was launched, in its first few years until roughly the Great Depression. There are many changes to its components. In 1932, eight stocks within the Dow were replaced. However, during this change, the Coca-Cola Company, Procter & Gamble were added to the index, two stocks that are still part of the Dow in 2019. The most recent large-scale change to the Dow took place in 1997, when four of the index components were replaced. Two years later, in 1999, four more components of the Dow were changed, and the most recent changes took place on June 26, 2018, while Walgreens Boots Alliance included replaced General Electric Company. Okay, so here's the list of all of the companies, and I won't go through the key historic dates. I can link to this if you're interested. Here we go. I'll go through one. On December 26, the Dow recorded, oh, in 2018, the Dow recorded its largest one-day point gain of 1,000 and 86. Uh, the Dow in February 5, 2018 fell a record 1,175.2. So there you go. So today with our, what was it, 1%? So we're 285. So we're not at record levels of, of dropping. But that's interesting. That's interesting. So there you go, guys. Now you know what they're talking about when they're referring to the Dow. So when they're saying 285 points. So and why it's different to the S&P 500. The benchmark S&P 500 fell 0.7%. The tech-heavy Nasdaq dropped 1.1%. Investor sentiment soared even further after the large, latest figures showed that US manufacturing activity fell to a three-year low. The Institute for Supply Management said its index of nas uh, national factory activity dropped to 49.1, its lowest reading since early 2016. Any reading below 50 means so it signals a contraction. 
means signals or any, anything, any reading below 50 signals a contraction. It's a PMI. It's, it's similar to how, uh, if you want to look at an example of it, I will link to the video I did and I'll just write a time here. So remember, I'll link to the video I did yesterday about Australia's manufacturing slowdown, where we actually go through all the questions that are asked of the manufacturers. It's quite interesting. I'd love to set one up for the architectural profession just to get an understanding of where it's all heading. Because you know when you're in business, you do the call around, you chat to people, you see how they're going and you kind of see where it's all heading. So the protracted US-China trade tensions weighed on business confidence, stoking fears of an upcoming recession. Well, sentiment was already poor to start the day. And then the week of unexpected manufacturing data just added fuel to the fire, said David Mazza, managing director of asset management firm Direxion. We now have confirmation that the escalation in the trade war has spilled over to US manufacturing, just as it has to manufacturing around the globe. Spot gold price jumped 1% to US 1 million, uh, and oil dropped 0.7. But let's look at, let's look at silver. And the reason why people are talking about silver is because of its ratio to gold. And I'm no expert and I'm not giving financial advice, but it's broken the $19 mark and it's trending up. The last time we had the GFC, it was what, 50 or $49 at its hot peak. So if anyone can tell me how we can know when it's hit that level, I would like to know just out of personal interest <laughs> levels. So, you know, people are talking about gold, people are talking about silver, and precious metals, people are putting into bonds. Everything seems to be lining up that a recession's coming. You gotta remember the, the Dow Jones and all of those things. You know, the share market is more to do with trading bots, isn't it? Let me know what you think, guys. Do you think we're headed for tough times? How do you think this will affect Australia? The GDP figures haven't been released for Australia as I'm recording this. The RBA didn't increase interest rates, so it'll be interesting to see at lunchtime. Oh, and I have a very special video coming out today that was uh, something created a song, remix song created by one of my viewers. And I think it is fantastic. So make sure, make sure you come back around one o'clock guys. You'll enjoy it. Anyway, like, share and subscribe, and I will see you all again later. Take care.